Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and I'm your host, Mike Crowley. Today, we're joined by mother and daughter writing team Roxy and Katie Leeson and Nick Hausman, illustrator, to talk about their new children's book, Brave Mave. Katie and Nick both live in Belmont with their respective families. So welcome, everyone. It's great to talk with you today. Thank you. Let, let me ask you first if you could tell us a little bit about yourselves and how this book came about. And maybe, Katie, we start with you. Sure. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having us today. Um, I am a Belmont resident, as you mentioned. I have a four-year-old daughter and like all parents have been living through this pandemic with a little one underfoot and juggling work and um, trying to keep her active and busy. And last summer, probably around the June timeframe, we'd really been through about three months of no school and the pandemic. I started thinking, gosh, I just don't have the right words to explain what we're going through um, to her, with her, and to also try to figure out where her head was at and really understand what she was taking in. And so my mom, being a veteran preschool educator, and I started teaming up and thinking about, wow, could we really write a story that would help my Maeve, her Maeve, as her granddaughter? Um, and we took it from there, and the, the drafting process began. Um, and then from there, I'll let them introduce themselves, but um, okay. then we were able to partner up. So I am Roxy Leeson, um, Katie's mother and Maeve's grandmother, and I'm also an early childhood educator. Um, and I came at this book really from two points of view, one being Katie's mom trying to answer her questions about how does she talk to Maeve about this thing called a pandemic. And also in my role as an early childhood consultant, I was being asked a lot of questions from parents and teachers about what do I say? How do I do it? And one of the things that we know about young children is they're not what I call once and done learners. You don't have one conversation and they say, okay, I got it. They're gonna ask that same question over and over and over again. And probably from a variety of adults in their lives in hopes to hear the same answer. And the best way to do that is through a children's book that they can read over and over and over again with a trusted adult. Okay, how, how about you, Nick? Um, my name is Nick Hausman. Uh, I live in Belmont, as you say, and uh, I have two children, my son, Will, and my daughter, Kate, who actually both went to the same preschool as Maeve. And I had heard that uh, Katie was working on this book project and was looking for somebody to possibly illustrate it. And she ended up approaching me. And I was actually getting back into art. I um, had been taking some classes at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, and now some online courses. And uh, and decided to go for it, even though this was a bit of a stretch uh, as I was just getting back into it. Okay. So Katie, um, this book, Brave Mave, is based on your own daughter then in some respects. T tell me a bit more about how the book draws on that experience with your daughter. Um, and, and, and frankly, you know, uh, your children as well, Nick, um, helping them process what's going on with this pandemic. Sure. Well, Mike, we wanted to introduce very familiar themes so that it would resonate right away. Um, and so you'll see images in the book of Maeve doing the exact things that we were doing to keep ourselves busy, um, cooking and dancing and planting gardens and looking for bugs and trying to keep things as normal as possible. Um, but then we also wanted to make sure we introduced pictures of her curious and asking questions and seeing things new and not sure quite yet what they meant. Um, one of my favorite images is of her looking at this empty pool. You know, the Belmont pool being closed mm -hmm. for the summer was a big change for all of us, parents included, to not have that resource. And so I think that image of the child looking out of the back windshield at an empty pool, um, you know, is meaningful to me, but also a great conversation starter with her about, you remember that the pool was closed and what did we do instead? And, you know, how did we feel about that? Um, and so we hope that the images would prompt discussion and rediscussion about what we lived through. All right, so, so let, let me ask you, um, Roxy, if, if you could um, uh, tell us, you know, about the age group this book is targeted for and, and how you see the book helping young children as they deal with the pandemic. Um, thank you. Um, we targeted the age group of three to five, but what we're finding is that it's reaching children even older. Um, 
you know, they enjoy the book too. They're reading it to themselves. Um, but basically I'd say it's three to five. Um, and what we know about um, young children and parents of young children is that, you know, as adults, we really want to protect children from, you know, the side of life that's uncomfortable. Um, we want um, life to be always, as I say, uh, rainbows and unicorns, but it's, it's just not that way. So there's some tricks that we can use to help children um, deal with the uncomfortable side of life. And one is not to dismiss their questions. Just because they're three years old, they still have you know, a lot of feelings and they don't have the language to go with them, but they are feeling. And they may be feeling just through us. You know, They know that things are different or we may have a different tone in our voice or a different feel in our body when you know, when you hug your parent and they're anxious, it's not the same as when your parent is, is um, relaxed. So we don't want to dim dismiss their questions also, because if children don't have answers, they make up answers. And nine times out of 10, their answers that they make up are worse than the real answers. Um, and we like to answer their questions with questions, you know, what do you think? Um, if a child asked me, you know, how long am I going to have to wear this mask? I would turn it around and say, how long do you think we're going to have to wear the masks? And they may say, you know, one minute. <laughs> and you could say, no, not one minute, but, you know, um, or they'll say a hundred years. And you could say, no, I know it won't be a hundred years, but, you know, when I do find out how long we'll be wearing masks, I will tell you. So you always want to be as honest as you as you can, um, and not to use fear. I think too often we say, you know, we need to wear a mask so that we, the germs don't get into us and we don't get sick and, and die. You know, we wanna say we wear a mask because it's the safe thing to do. And that's all you need to say to young children. Um, and with the book, we decided to start with comfortable questions to draw kids in like, you know, I think Maeve says, um, I live in a yellow house. What color is yours? My favorite color is purple. What is yours? So start with things that are okay to talk about before you get into the other stuff. Um, and I think, you know, there's always going to be discomfort in life. And so each time we help a child handle something that's uncomfortable, they, they're ready to handle the next discomfort in, in life. Um, so, and also one more thing that I'm thinking of, it's important to clue the other adults in a child's life into what you're saying. So often um, Katie will call me and tell me about a conversation she's had with Maeve and exactly what words she used so that when Maeve asked me that question, I can use the same words. Nick, I understand, Nick, I understand that this is the first children's book you've illustrated. Can you tell us um, a little bit about how you approached it? Sure, thanks, Mike. Well, first off, I really wanted it to be from the child's point of view. So um, I tried to take the experience of, of my own daughter, Kate, and, uh, and work from some pictures of her and Maeve, and then put together the, the storyboard of all the different pages, um, really trying to bring out Katie's and Roxy's concepts and the ideas that they had uh, in the story and in the book. And uh, it was really a great learning process for me as well, um, working with watercolors. So it's done in watercolors and ink and, um, and putting together the illustrations and going back and forth with, with Katie and Roxy. Um, so, you know, any thoughts about a next project? And this is a question for all of you. <laughs> well, I've had friends toss me ideas <clears throat> um, that are very practical, like, save Maeve, you know, she learns how to save money or cave Maeve and she learns how to snorkel and scuba dive. Um, I think we'll have to ask her though. You know, she, she started to tell me she was writing a book the other day, which was fascinating um, because she'd seen me working on this so much. And uh, she asked me to get her lap, uh, my laptop out for her. And she just started plugging away. And what was so interesting, Mike, was without any prompting, she said, I'm writing a story about, um, uh, for babies to teach them how to stay safe and take care of each other. So something was already clicking from our story to her about what the process of writing was and what it was about. That's so interesting. So where can viewers buy a copy of Brave Maeve? 
Well, we're very excited, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, Belmont Books has been carrying it and ordering uh, for folks. Uh, they've been doing a terrific job during the pandemic of responding to readers' requests through their online system. Um, and so we're uh, eager to work with them on additional programming on that front. It's also available through Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and both you know, soft cover and in the digital format. I just wanna also offer that any, um, any support for this book is most welcome. Uh, the proceeds uh, from the book are going to go to Belmont Helps, the organization that was, as you know, uh, founded at the beginning of the pandemic to be responsive to some of the emergent needs of families in our area. And we just feel so good about that, um, given their mission, you know, providing food, but also things like phone buddies. Um, when you look at their website and you learn more about them and you talk with Amy, their co-founder, um, all of their interesting program uh, designed to get at both the, the fundamental day-to-day -day needs that people have and the social emotional needs, um, similar to this book. That, that, that is so great to know that, that, that um, you know, uh, some of the profits from this book will be benefiting um, uh, Belmont Helps. And, and I would like to say that, you know, sometimes we're challenged trying to find ways to help our children process this pa pandemic. And, and, you know, the book seems like such a great way to help us do that. So I want to thank you, Roxy, Katie, and Nick. And, um, and, and I, I hope that we'll talk ag again soon. Thank you. That would be terrific. Thanks, Mike.